welcome to the Battle Square. We're presenting the Spira Open, uh, very generously sponsored by the Card Cavern. Uh, my name's Dan, this is Matt. Uh, we will be commentating for the first round feature match with Robert Phillips and Joshua Freeman Birch. Uh, they're both running a Fire Ice deck, I do believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Both run the same element. Yeah. Um, they're... There are differences to their decks, um, but Not we'll be a complete mirror match. No, um, we'll be commentating throughout the match. Um, we'll begin shortly, but the um, I just wanted to state the, the with Untap, it'll be a bit difficult. Not difficult, but um, you won't be able to follow it exactly, especially with two players like Robert and Joshua who they're, they're know quite each fast other. players, so. Yeah. They, because they know each other, I think they anticipate a lot of each other's plays. So you will see some actions taking effect before the cards actually enter field and stuff. So it might be a little hard to follow, but we will, to our best, try to explain it as it goes. That's, yeah, that's about it. Isn't yeah, it, really. Yeah. So uh, now we'll get started. Cool. Here we go. Now, obviously, a thing to remember is this will run a little bit slower than if it was a live card game um, because it's online. But we we'll do there our best be, uh, to try and keep you entertained as we go. <laughs> yeah, there will be some instances where there, there won't be much going on in the actual game. Um, I think they're just getting their decks ready now, shuffling. Um, like, like we say, they're, they're running Fire Ice. Now, Obviously, there's going to be similarities in the decks, but they're not exactly the same. Um, they, they do test against each other, so I think that they, well, yeah, they do know each other very well, don't they? Yeah, like I say, you're going to see some sort of actions taking effect before cards enter, stuff like that, just because they anticipate what, what's happening. I'm sure they probably knew each other's decks all right. And they're both they very, very good players as well, so... Yeah, it's probably um, worth noting that they have placed quite well in other events. Um, details of those events I'll probably list with the video, so you'll be able to see after you've watched it if you like. Unfortunately, we don't actually have the deck lists. Um, we don't know if they're online or anything. We, we'll uh, try and get the hold of those for you. Um, if they are available. More than likely, they're on FF decks at some point. They will be at some point. Um, we'll speak to the. Uh, well, we say that we don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. Right, uh, they're drawing their first, uh, deciding whether to mulligan or not. Now, obviously. Okay, we'll... so it looks like uh, Josh got first turn. I'm assuming, because I can see Rob only rolled a four, and it is a twenty-side dice. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand D20s anyway. Well, I understand them obviously, but I don't. Why not just a roll of six, a six? Oh no, 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 no! It does. Looks like Rob got first turn. Okay, so straight away we're noticing Bahamut has been ditched for a red mage. I won't explain why you would want to drop a um, Bahamut <laughs> for a red mage first turn. <laughs> Obviously, that's the that's the perfect um, starter card. Something like Red Mage, two drop backup. Yeah, again, and it's a good good two drop backup. It's an opus one card, and it still sees play now. Um, I mean, with an ability like that, I think it's, it's yeah, it's, it's bound see, to yeah. for a good while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's worth noting that it's opus one. There's still loads of opus one. Um, I mean, opus one mass. is a very very relevant, very relevant. Opus to this to the whole set really. I think a lot of the cards are still mega relevant. They will be for a while. So there's, I think, what Sarah being discarded for Jill Nabart, which isn't always your ideal first first two cost back up to play. But you um, see it quite often. Jill yeah, Nabart getting I mean, played first turn. You find you just want to get a backup out. So I mean, if you hit it early. It doesn't really matter. You've still got the special ability for later. And, and it's the still fact pretty that useful. she's EX as well, uh, she, that does help. So later on... Yeah, maybe not at this point. No. Obviously, <laughs> no. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yep, now it's Robert's turn again. And we'll just... There's 
Josh having a good play with his cards. Okay, let's see what's going on. So we've got a red mage tap. Uh, Kefka in the break zone. Yeah, it's a funny one that we did notice uh, Kefka. So at the beginning of the game, did think it was going to be Fire Earth. Just noting, Sage is a two drop backup. Now he's obviously got rid of Kefka. Um, and tapped Red, and mage, tapped for red the mage for the element. So uh, obviously um, that's not the ideal play. But he's obviously got things in his hand that he doesn't want to get rid of just now. So that's why he's got rid of Kefka. And who the hell's going to play Kefka that early? Yeah. <laughs> but, Especially when it's Earth. Yeah, as, as I was saying, when we first watched the game, we noticed it's a really interesting Tekken card. Um, because you only have to remove three characters to be able to play him onto the field, he's a really good splash for any, for any element. If you just want that break effect and that sort of high power body sat there afterwards. And who doesn't like Kefka? Okay, so we can see Rob... Um, sorry, Josh has just played into a Zangan, which is going to let him fetch himself a Tifa. Of cost four or less. And uh, So you can always imagine it's probably the starter Opus one anyway. That's, that's usually the one to go for, and yeah, that's the one he's gone for. It's just... It, uh, that, that is... It's a still nice a really play. good card. Yeah, yeah. effectively, yeah. two drop back up. And of course, um, it works well with ice, with that dull effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the 6k. So it's it's really good for sort of dulling deal 6k, entering something like Sid Reigns to finish off the damage, force discards. And yeah. uh, there he's played, uh, Josh has played uh, Zidane, um, or Zidane, or whatever way you say it. <clears throat> So I, I think it looks like he took the draw. Yeah. So. I think it's back to Robert's back to turn. Rob. Yep. See what he does. See, now he, he's kind of, at this point, I'd be thinking I want to do something to deal with the early aggression. But you can see he played into his two cost, which it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, um, that's always nice you know, to do. It's, it, it's, it's worth noting, it's not that bad taking one maybe two points yeah. of damage early on it, it, to set yourself it, up yeah. um, it depends on the deck you're playing against the person you're playing against um, depends on what your deck is uh, it's if, always a little bit worrying when you've yeah. got such early aggression yeah. that maybe you're going to see an attack next turn and then maybe they play into another forward um, and then obviously it just it puts you that little bit further behind again and, there we and go obviously, with, there we yeah. go. We saw the Tifa come into his hand the turn before. Proper aggro. So, yeah, we're, we're seeing the attack as well. Yeah, attacking with Tifa. So I can only assume that it's going to be two points of damage at this point, you know. <laughs> oh, another Bahamut gone. So that probably felt really bad at that point. Yeah, to see, chances are to discard he's only one running and then to the, see another one yeah. go at that point. It's chances just, are he's only running two in his deck as well. I don't think there's many decks that I've seen running three. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, second point of damage. There's another red mage into the break zone. Did that, which, uh, that I think this four? one increases damage by 1k. Is that right? Yeah. Four. Yes. Yeah. Right, that, that, back okay. to Robert's turn. <clears throat> I'd imagine he's going to play a forward. No, back up. Okay, so at least we've, we've run into a searcher. Yeah. So this is likely to fetch, um, you know, like a Setsa or a Terra. Yeah. Something along those lines. Um, like a Terra might be nice as there's two dull forwards on field at this point. Um, so it might be able to ping the effect with something else. Or Okay, know. so Shadow. he went for Shadow. So remove one card in your hand from the game. Choose one forward, deal it 1,000 damage for each CP required to play the name card. Okay, so that's quite an interesting one. Um, I haven't he's really a, seen much a, play with that card, to be he's honest. He's a 7k first strike as well, which is never bad. Uh, he's playing Shadow out. And he discards another Kefka. Yeah, to deal 8k to a forward. So that goes out of the game. I don't know. Oh no, that that was to pay for the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Ignore me. I'm 
chatting rubbish. Oh, yeah, we see here, so straight away, Tifa's ability is going to tie that shadow down. Um, that way, he, he which is get, perfect. Yeah. It, it swings in another two points of damage unless there's some response. And Tifa's ability, uh, you can use as soon as she comes out, even if Zangan isn't on field. Yeah, it doesn't have um, that tap in the cost. So, oh, and Acid Reigns. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Yeah. So that's just going to remove that card. Oh, or is it? What's he doing? So he's paid four. Oh, yeah, four CP to remove yep. Tifa. Gets rid of her. Oh, damage. So oh, he took the third a, point. It's a Sephiroth, isn't it? Yeah, I believe that's, that's the EX. The EX that searches Sephiroth. for a dark Sephiroth. So you can just see he's just fetched that to his hand. And he hasn't got uh, any more haste or anything like that, so he can only attack with that one forward. Back to Robert's turn. Okay, so Robert really wants to see a forward now. Um, I'm sure he's taken far more damage than he had probably anticipated on taking at this point in the game. Most likely. So we see another Bahamut go. So he was running three. Um, um, I stand oh. corrected. Did he just play that? Or okay, so it looks like yep. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, he untapped one. So we got the Emperor Zande. At least he's thinking now he's he's got a a pretty strong blocker. Yeah, that's going to uh, take out most um, and hopefully forward. save him a turn. Yeah. As well, which is probably the most important thing at this point, um, just so that he can regain his hand a little bit. Because uh, I'm sure I imagine it's not feeling too good at the moment. Uh, he, he's anticipating something here. Genesis. There yep. we go. He's, he's anticipating. So that. this is exactly like we said at the beginning of the game. Um, obviously, he dulled the the Emperor Zande before you even saw the Genesis on field, and as if to know it was just going to happen. And Josh has used Belias before um, paying for it so that's just how they play that it's not um, necessarily wrong per se but yeah that's just how they play um, you know and this is really good with the Blyas on the Genesis it yeah. allows to issue the three points of damage which is just brilliant at this point in the game and makes him discard the card. and it forces a discard which is just horrible to feel for Rob at that point yeah and Rob's got a <laughs> a frozen Zande, which is Zande. horrible. <clears throat> He's tapping two, three, four. What's he doing? What's he doing? Five, okay, I imagine this is that Dark Sephiroth. Yeah. So that's going to come in. Probably. Mm, maybe Jill. Yeah. To be honest, it's the logical choice. You don't really want to see another Zangan searching another Tifa. No, not really. No. Um, and you don't want that freeze effect on your Sephiroth that you've just played out. No. Oh. Okay, so here we go. He's, he's got showing, you, showing what he's you the cards as he draws them. So we know exactly what's going to be coming out this turn. I think it's probably just a, a cheeky little show of cards. <laughs> you know, just to show you. Josh would never be cheeky. He's discarding VV, and then he's just being <laughs> playing his Irvine face down, <laughs> yeah, as if we don't know what it's going to be. Dealing, oh oh oh, six K, I think it is, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's six K. Yeah, dealing six K to any forward, I think. Yeah, any of your opponent's forwards. I oh, know. Any choose forward. one forward. Any yeah. forward. Okay, so yeah, he targeted Sephiroth, um, and at this point, I believe Rob's on six points of damage, so... All he's got to do is get rid of Sephiroth. Yeah, I mean, this is lethal uh, now, with I a party they, attack. they have a little discussion here about the party attack, because uh, with untap, you can't declare party attack. Um, you have to do it in the section, like the chat section. Um, yeah, just make your opponent aware of what you're yeah. doing. It's pretty so, obvious at times, and um, 
Right, so, I mean, so at this point, all he can do is block with Sephiroth, and then you've got Zidane sat there. So, well, that's game. Now, I, I, I'll be honest, I quite like that um, that play at the end. It, it's, 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 it makes sense. Do the uh, 6k. It just it doesn't matter. It just goes to show in. that within that last draw, the level of aggression in fire oh. is just so high. You're just always drawing into something that's yeah. going to create some kind of an issue for your opponent. It's all about the burn, isn't it? It's yeah. fire, isn't it? <laughs> You're constantly burning. But um, it, yeah, it, well, it's good to see. Well, Josh obviously won the first uh, first match uh, for this round for well, his first match for this um, for the Spear Open. And we're hopefully going to try and get interviews with all of the winning players from all of the feature matches. Um, so you might find that they're uploaded a little bit delayed from the actual games because we you know, have to arrange an actual decent and suitable time to uh, record the interviews with them. But there will be extra content for you guys to watch. Also, I'd just like to state that some of the games may be a little bit longer. That one was quite quick. Um, we may have quicker games, we may have longer games, we don't know, obviously. Um, well, I'm sure they're not all going to be the exact same length. Oh, well, obviously, <laughs> well, there's no need to be like that, is there? But, uh, yeah, also, I think in other videos we probably will block out the chat. Um, this game, it wasn't entirely necessary, and it is nice to be able to see the cards and not layer stuff over it, but other games we may have to cover that chat. Um, just just, depends from, on just from other spectators. Yeah, um, depends on what some people names. say. Well, we don't want any uh, bad language or anything uh, on the videos. No. But we hope you enjoyed the video. And, uh, yeah, we'll be coming back with some more. We do actually have one more feature from this round, um, which will be coming up as well. So if you want to keep an eye out, that'd be great. Um, I'd just like to say, um, give the Card Cavern a, a, a little uh, click. There, there is a... Um, yeah, they're actually running... Um, Nick Hall's running a promotion on Card Cavern at the moment for the Spear are Open um, just to celebrate his first event, 15% off. Um, there was an ad at the beginning of the video, so if you wanted to click back, have a look. Uh, there's a promotional code, which is just Spira in all capitals. Check it out. It's 15% off of all Final Fantasy trading card game singles. Um, but that's it. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you for watching. Cheers for watching.